Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So, when I left you yesterday, I was going to do um, boro stitch right through the bottom of the piece. But when I started, if you remember, we I did these bits with you just to make sure that that cream was secured. And I really liked how just those three rows looked. And then I was like, well, maybe I could do less is more. So I ended up doing the perimeter up here. Then I thought, well, do I carry on this way and do a cross hatch? So I did another two to secure that edge. And then I was sort of, I don't know, I, I started then working my way around here. Um, and then I was like, I really like it. I really, really like it. It's like, I don't know, I feel like I got a little bit arty. Does that make sense? It's like I had plans on just running the blue boro stitch, you know, through the whole thing. But um, yeah, less is more. So I'm really, really pleased with it. So I've, in the meantime, done a little um, overcast stitch right around the whole perimeter. So everything's nice and secure and it won't just disintegrate on me. So I thought time to turn the camera on and see and see what else comes of um, <clears throat> my stitching. So, I don't know, what do we do next? I think I'm gonna do, I did discuss with you guys doing overcast stitch on that white piece. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm gonna continue with that idea. I think that will be a nice feature to this center. So let's get that sorted next. It's funny, the best laid plans suddenly go on a detour. So I'm really happy with that. This piece, yeah, you know, I've tried to make each one a little bit different with that um, Sashiko stitching. But this one is more like slow stitch, I guess. But like the, um, Anne Brooks has been doing a little bit of it, mending, darning, where you do repetitive lines over each other to create that cross hatch. It's really effective. Mind you, those stitches are really, really close together, the rows. <clears throat> I can barely see this cream. is there. I need to secure it down anyway so other than bringing a blue in I don't really want to do that it'd be the only blue on the whole thing. It's okay. I can see it you guys won't be able to see it but There's a little cross that I see popping up all through this style of embroidery. Not like the cross I did. It's like a little X. I might use this little blue piece here to do some of those. Or do I keep them in the same style? That's what I've been doing. I think I'll keep it in the same style. But then this is a different one again. I, I don't know, I don't know. It's like these little box is, uh, this rice bag is a sampler. Each side is something different to explore. And I just love that idea. So every time I pick it up, I can sort of go, oh yeah, that's when I did that style and then turn it around and that's another stitch or yeah, really happy with them. We're getting to the end of it all too. We can do our loops at the top of the bag and close the final seams up, which are around the top. I found my cordage and I think it'll work a treat. You can make a cord, a sash out of fabric, but um, I think I said yesterday that I just don't have a lot of fabric that I can donate to the cord around the top. 
So I'd rather use that fabric for uh, stitching in this particular case anyway, like it's valuable. <laughs> I'm hoarding it. So I had some of this. I think I picked it up at Bunnings. I've got two thicknesses, a fine one, and then this one, which I've just never seemed to have used. I, you could use it for um, macrame. I think that's why it's at Bunnings at the moment. It's a bit of a trend at the moment. So that's what I plan to use for the cordage. I would say it's probably 10 mil, maybe 12. Probably more like 10 mil. It's only a small rice bag, so I think I don't need anything thicker. And I think because it is small, if I was to make a strap, the strap would have to be spaghetti strap because otherwise I think it would overpower the piece. It's just my thoughts. Turning that strap inside out would be a nightmare. So you'd have to top stitch it while joining, but I'll go through all that in the next um, video. So if you are someone that wants to do a strap, you at least know what to do. It's pretty straightforward. And if you've watched the videos that I've linked below of, of others making rice bags, I'm sure you know where we're heading. Plus, now that I've watched a few rice bag videos, YouTube's throwing even more rice bag videos up. So it's been fun just to see what others have done. And yeah, must be thousands of rice bags out there. I only came across them oh, probably six months ago. And I thought, oh, wow. I'd like to make one of those. All right, I'm coming along the bottom here. So that piece is secure. You wouldn't think it. You can barely see the stitch. So that was a, a lot of effort for not much bang for my buck. I think I really like the way that this piece of fabric came up when I stitched the boro over it on another side. So I'm going to do that again. Right through the gaps. And then, I guess we need to have a think about, we'll do the crosses, they're easy. And this blue fabric up here. What are we going to do there? So my guess is there's one more video left in us and this project will be complete. Then I'm going to make a video of the project and play that a week before so that everyone has time to gather supplies. So that's the next thing I'll do. Be nice to have something in advance so that you guys can sort of see where we're heading. Okay, I like how this fabric stitches up. Those little dots, it just makes it quite an interesting little piece of fabric. Oh, crooked. Look at that big dog leg stitch. Gosh, you know when you have them, you can see it. It's as obvious as anything. Trying my darndest just to stop. Redo. Anyway, 
Okay. Last row. Okay, now my thread is down here. Do we do anything to the stripe? I wasn't going to. Maybe I'm going to I might do some big stitches like that. That's something different. Like a little solid frame. Oh, this is getting real arty. <laughs> oh my goodness, as arty as it gets. I guess the moment you think you're being arty, you're probably not being very arty. Alrighty, what's next? I think I might do... overcast stitch around this little piece. I just feel like I need a bit of a feature in the center and that white one that I just overcast this piece here just didn't didn't give me the bang for my buck. So I might do it to this little guy because I know it'll show up well. Get rid of my glasses. You can see better without them. Can't see anything past the end of the table, but I can see this work without my glasses. Yeah, this is better. Little itty bitty stitches. I think the big pattern piece up here, I'm just going to frame it with a stitch right around the perimeter. exciting. This has taken some time. You see these little projects and you think, oh yeah, I can do that. That won't take long. I don't know, what are we up to? Episode 10? So that's 10 hours. Plus I've probably completed a, an hour of work behind the scenes on each panel and you know. So that's 20 hours. There's at least another episode. So let's round it up to 22 hours of work in this piece. And then if you were to on sell it, in Australia, an average hourly rate for, a, say, a shop assistant is about $25 an hour. Boy, you couldn't get that. So then you drop it back to, say, $10 an hour to get something for your effort. At 22 hours, $220 for a little bag. Oh boy, you'd have to do, if you were going to make some of these to on sell, you'd have to rely on your sewing machine to make it a bit more efficient and maybe do a small amount of stitching on it just to give it that personal touch and then leave it at that because you just, yeah, they're, Little works of art, but it's always the way when you make something for yourself, it's over the top, isn't it? And it just becomes bigger than Ben Hur. Well, it does in my place. Everyone says, Oh, you should sell what you've just made. And it's like, Well, that took four months. And by the time you've invested that amount in, you sort of, it's very hard. Very hard. But they would be lovely 
little item to put in an Etsy store if you had one and you were wanting to, you know, use some of your fabrics up and make a few extra coins, which usually just gets invested into your room. Into your supplies. Riveting viewing this is. Going slow today. I don't know what's wrong. I've only just had one sip of my coffee, so I'm guessing that's slowing me down. Don't even ask me what hour of the night it is. It's ridiculous. The sun will be up in a few hours' time. That's all I'll say. <laughs> But I know there's a few of you out there just like me. You wake up and your your mind starts thinking about what your project you're working on and then up you go. It's like, oh, I'll just, I'll just get up and do a few hours. I know you're all sitting there stitching with me. I've chatted to quite a few of you and you've said, yep, when you're up, I'm up. Okay. All right. A little more. All right, so nearly there. Thank you everyone too for your kind comments it's lovely to see that you're using some of your scraps too and you're making some of these little bags or big bags a couple of you are making big versions I don't have a lot of space in my craft room so I think these will be handy just to put morsels in to rummage through for me, anyway. Might be my go-to little project, I think. Just to have the squares made. Over time, you could just do squares and then one day sit down and make them into the bags. You know, just stitch. the final corner Alrighty. one more stitch and I might end it off. um yeah I'll end it off because I need to get to the other side up the top corner there I think is next. I think I'll do. That hasn't been top stitched there. That's a, a fraying point. Might be okay because it's not a big length. Okay. Gone 
quiet. Why have I gone quiet? I'm concentrating. I'm trying to get these stitches to ouch, to look good and not stab myself with a needle. Okay, I think I'll change my thread out because it's getting a little bit miserly. Beautiful. Okay. Right, we're on the last straight now. Down the home straight we go. How that is its own little box. Oh, come on, come on, that's it. Last stitch. Now, what do we do with our little? Let's finish this outer edge first. I'm still thinking about those X's. So let's get the last, the last side done, which is over here. Let's pick up here. And use our fancy words, stack the needle with some fabric to draw through our thread. That's some new words in our vocabulary. Can't even say that correctly. There we go. Weave it through. Okay, right. Last edge. Will we make it? Maybe. Maybe not. Don't rush, girl. You're just going to be crooked. Come on, slowly does it. Okay, a little bit further. Walk that through there. I'm not saying much, am I? Very quiet today. Why is that? I think it's because I'm really having to think about this piece. I haven't really planned it out, you know, like we have the other ones. I sort of had those key, what's that? Those key um, stitches that I wanted to do and 
I don't even mind it up that way. Gosh, don't they look different just turning them? I like that, actually. Now, this little guy, what are we going to do with him? Can we, can we divide him in half and quarters? Maybe do I'll give it a go. Let's try and do four cross stitches in there like you would cross stitch. It's probably not Japanese inspired, but let's see what it looks like. Let's find the middle of that piece of fabric. And let's go to the outer edges of it. Come back to the middle. Oh, we're going to have a play now. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's not very exciting. So let's go to the side here and see if we can get something like this happening. It's like a combination of a few crosses threads in my way and then I pick up here and come down here yeah I like that don't know if it's very Japanese but I like it there we go fancy <laughs> That's it. I do believe we have finished our last little guy. Yep, we have finished. Okay, so let's get him on the box, on the bag. I decided I'll put that piece to the top, I think. I really like, really like all that. So, first things first, let's grab our pins. Let's get him into this corner and to that top edge. Lining it up, ready to be stitched. Let's get a couple pins in there. So thick, I'm bending pins to do it, but it's really just to hold it for a second. And then we've got to go along the bottom, back into that corner. Beautiful. Oh, love it. Love it. What a pretty thing you are. Then that goes to there. Okay. Okay, I think we're there. Let's get some cream thread. So we'll need to make it disappear one side, but it can come through on the opposite side. So let's start with cream. And once again, we're just catching all the different layers. Invisible stitch one side for 
and there's blue there so and the other side so we have to be mindful of the colors and then slowly scooting our way down the edge of the piece lovely Beautiful. You could put in as many stitches as you like. You might want to be really precise and really put heaps of stitches in. I'm sort of scooting along every quarter of an inch. I think that's plenty. It's not like it's the, the integrity of the bag is reliant on it because we've got this lining that is machine stitched in under it all so that's really holding everything together okay and through it goes now we're nearly to our corner so it's just a case of making sure we've got Plenty of stitches, but still attempting to hide them. But, you know, that's all the charm, isn't it? Even if you see them, don't stress over it because that's telling the story of your, your work as well. Let's just get that a little bit more together. That's better. Go through to the bottom. through to the side catch the side corner that's not going anywhere okay so now we're on our way across the bottom Let's just get that tucked in a bit there. Yep, that's better. Get rid of that pin. Like I was saying, I think yesterday, that if, if you're going to do the piece this way, your wadding needs to be considered because it's visible. If you're going to stitch the pieces together like we did the lining, just on a sewing machine with seams, and then you turn the bag inside out on itself, um, well, the wadding's irrelevant. You may not even need the wadding if you're not going to make the bag stand. So, a few things to... Where am I going? I need to go back. I was, had a little gap there. So I was getting ahead of myself. I guess your colour scheme too... If you're doing all creams and that, you might not want that whitish wadding popping through. If you're doing a pink bag, you might want to find a pink felt or 
trim it back out of the way so that it's not seen. thread time to get new thread and we're on the last get rid of that pin we're on the last side so we've got to kick off here oh the sun is starting to come up that's lovely Okay, so we're on this corner. So I'm going to get a few stitches in that go from the front side to the base. Then a couple stitches that go from the front side to the side next door. There we go. Right, now we're on the last last side perfect gosh really really pleased with it makes me want to do a bigger project i think it's the colors they're just beautiful i do like a pop of red too so i don't know maybe i'll do something that has a little bit of red in it don't know don't know who knows? Imagine a Henrik hair with all these tones on him. How beautiful would he look? With all Japanese stitching through him. Oh, I see there's a rabbits in there imagery. I've seen a few running rabbits in their work and they're beautiful. Okay. Nearly there, guys. You'll be thinking this is riveting, but I know you're all stitching away. doing your own things anyway so it's all good we're just stitching everybody's stitching okay I was so close to the finish line get rid of that pin okay Just put some good stitches in there. Hold all that. And finish it off. There we go. Very good. Excellent. And it's standing. Look at that. Let me go up. 
There we go. Look at that. Standing beautifully. That's going to hold all sorts of goodies in there. And we've got our open edge here ready to go for our binding. Now, I have decided to use just a um, plain fabric. I'm not going to do um, multiple colours or anything like that. So it'll be um, something simple. I might top stitch it. I don't know. I'll get to that. Have a think about it. And um, yeah, see see what we create. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Lovely, lovely. Very happy with our little bag or container. Look how it's holding its structure. How good is that? Well, it'd be floppy there, but you, you can see that it's got a bit of strength to it. That's really good. Really, really good. All right, everyone. Short video today. There you go. You get out of class early today. All right, I will um, see you in the next video. We will work out these loops and um, yeah, that's it. We're nearly there. All right, guys. Bye.